Okay, hello ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this webinar brought to you by City Index. Today we're going to be talking about Fibonacci trading. And this is, of course, part of our Wednesday series um, that, we, uh, uh, that we run every Wednesday uh, on a, a specific trading topic. And uh, again, today is going to be about Fibonacci trading. My name is James Chen. I am the Chief Technical Strategist at City Index Group. Now, uh, just in the past couple of days, yesterday actually, we did, um, uh, we did a webinar uh, with uh, with regard to the upcoming uh, UK elections uh, tomorrow and Thursday, and uh, that promises to be uh, uh, you know uh, probably a market moving event. So we did that, and um, it was very good. So uh, you know keep a keep a lookout on uh, what's going on with the uh, the uh, British pound as well as the FTSE uh, going into tomorrow and shortly thereafter. So. Um, we have a blog uh, on our website, and uh, let me just show it to you right now. Uh, right here, we have uh, we have a live blog that we're going to be updating on a on a regular basis, as we can see here. Uh, so we're giving all this uh, information regarding uh, you know uh, how the uh, elections may may move the markets and what kind of opportunities you might be able to see. Okay, so let's get started real quick uh, here with uh, Fibonacci trading. Now, first of all, before we get started, <coughs> uh, in terms of Fibonacci trading, I just wanted to touch upon the fact that you, you know, I'm probably not what you might call a Fibonacci trader. Uh, that being said, uh, you know, in terms of uh, using Fibonacci in my trading, uh, Fibonacci retracements and extensions in my trading, uh, I definitely do that. Uh, but it's uh, just a part of my uh, trading uh, arsenal. So it's not like I'm uh, using Fibonacci uh, extensions and retracements exclusively in my trading, uh, but it is a very popular topic, and uh, it does help in, uh, you know, in strengthening your rationale for getting into trades, getting out of trades. And basically what Fibonaccis are, are they, they help to reinforce uh, support and resistance, uh, and they help to identify potential turning points within trends. So for that, they're very, very useful, and they are a, definitely a good part of my trading, although, again, uh, I'm not going to be using uh, Fibonacci's uh, exclusively in my trading, just like I won't be using any other aspect of my trading exclusively to make trading decisions. And I've uh, spoken about this a lot in the past, um, we talked about uh, we talk about all kinds of different topics here, uh, including support and resistance, uh, trends, um, uh, you know, uh, indicators, uh, moving averages, uh, and all of that great stuff. Candlesticks. Last week we talked about, uh, you know, but uh, uh, essentially I'm taking a holistic approach by putting all of these tools together uh, in order to create the highest uh, potential probabilities for my trades, and this is a part of that. Uh, that being said, Fibonacci's are very, very popular. A lot of traders use them, and because they're so popular, um, they've sort of become a self-fulfilling prophecy. But I'm going to touch upon that uh, in a minute. Okay, so let's uh, let's move forward real quick. Uh, if you have any questions uh, during the course of this uh, webinar, please feel free to type them into the questions window. I'd be more than happy to answer them uh, towards the end or as they come up. And uh, let's get started. Before we get started, as always, just a quick disclaimer, financial trading carries a high level of risk to your capital with the possibility of losing more than your initial investment and may not be suitable for all investors. Ensure that you fully understand the risks involved and seek investment advice if necessary. Just going to leave that up for a couple seconds and then we're going to move forward. Okay, and again, uh, my name is James Chen. I'm the Chief Technical Strategist at City Index Group, which means that uh, I am uh, primarily um, tasked with uh, looking at the technicals, the, uh, the charts of uh, you know, pretty much all the different financial markets. I trade, I analyze, and I educate, much like I'm doing today. Uh, but that's enough about me. Let me move forward. Okay, so in terms of the educational webinars, uh, as I mentioned, these uh, Wednesday webinars, which is ongoing, uh, every uh, other Wednesday we're going to be doing this uh, moving forward. Uh, I talked about, in the past uh, several weeks, I've talked about many different topics here. Uh, as you can see, uh, we went through an introduction, uh, indicators, uh, chart patterns, multiple time frames, uh, trade entries, um, exits in terms of stop losses and profit targets, emotions and trading psychology, trading plan discipline, and then last week, or two weeks ago, I'm sorry, we talked about candlestick analysis, which was very popular, uh, popular and a very useful tool. 
Uh, and then today, of course, we're talking about Fibonacci trading. Now, if you missed any of these, um, any of these webinars, uh, they are all recorded and uh, placed on our website at cityindex.co.uk. You could just go to our uh, to that area. Let me just go there, there real quick because if you did also uh, miss our uh, our UK election um, webinar yesterday, you'll be able to go uh, to. Let me take a look here to our webinars page. It would be under Learn to Trade, and then it would be under Webinars over here on the left. And then here uh, you could see where we um, uh, where we uh, have all of our our webinars recorded. I'm sorry. Let me go up here. Webinar archive. Okay, so right here on the left, webinar archive, and then here from yesterday, the UK general election webinar special, where the four of us, including uh, myself and uh, Josh Raymond, Ashraf Lighty, and Ken uh, Odeluga, uh, we did um, a big two-hour webinar yesterday. You could you could go ahead and watch that there, and then uh, all of the other uh, different uh, webinars are here. As you can see, uh, two weeks ago I did the candlestick webinar. You simply click on that, and you'll be able to see the recording. Okay, so enough of that. Um, that's all recorded and there for you to watch. Next, uh, uh, two weeks from now, we're going to be talking about uh, the all-important support and resistance. I'm going to touch upon that a little bit today. Uh, and then trading with the trend, which I'm a big uh, proponent of. Uh, and then we're going to be talking about counter trend and range trading. And then we're going to have topics going forward um, as, as the weeks go by. So that's the, uh, that's the schedule. That's the agenda. And uh, let's get started with Fibonacci trading. Okay, now before we get to the actual Fibonacci's, uh, I'm not going to go through this a lot. It's just just wanted to touch upon this because, because uh, you know, I know for those of you who have heard me speak before that I talk uh, ad length and ad nauseum about uh, about confluence, and uh, the reason I'm doing that it's because uh, it's very very important to my trading um, and to a lot of traders, I, I believe. Uh, now, in terms of um, in terms of Fibonacci's, uh, Fibonacci's are one aspect of confluence, and basically confluence is just uh, an agreement uh, of uh, your different uh, tools that you have. So last week we talked about candlesticks, and I went over confluence real quick uh, on that as well. Um, uh, prior to that, we talked about different indicators, chart patterns, um, and uh, the trend, support, resistance, etc. Uh, you put all that together, and you get confluence, and confluence simply means that you're making your trade rationale stronger, and you're making a higher probability trading decision when you use confluence. So uh, basically, we're looking for uh, you know we're areas where more than one factor provide rationale for a trade entry or exit. So as I'm going to show you in a minute on my charts and uh, through this PowerPoint, uh, that uh, you know when I look at a Fibonacci uh, retracement, when I look at uh, a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement, for example. And if you don't know what that means, I'll show you in a minute. But uh, if I'm looking at a 38.2% Fibonacci retracement, I'm going to look for uh, also other clues where perhaps there's also a moving average there, or there's a resistance or support level there, or uh, there's a candlestick uh, pattern there as well. And uh, putting those together makes for a stronger rationale for a trade, makes for a better trade. Because what are all these tools telling you? They're creating a story for you, and that story is for you to act upon if it, is, uh, if it merits acting upon in the first place. So uh, if the story that you're getting is a weak story, then you're probably not going to want to take that uh, trade because uh, chances are it's going to be a lower probability trade. If, uh, if the story uh, that the charts are telling you is a very strong story, then that makes for a higher probability of trade, and why not wait for the higher probability trades? So that's the rationale behind confluence, and that's what I'm talking about today. So I'm not going to go through all this right now, but uh, there are many aspects of confluence, which includes the trend, um, you know, the uh, uh, major and minor support and resistance levels, uh, moving averages, other indicators, chart patterns, candlesticks, Fibonacci's like I'm going to be talking about today, uh, pivot points, etc. cetera. Uh, you, you don't have to uh, be looking at all of this, but... The point here is that if you could put some of these factors together, and if it's a strong rationale to get in long, which means to buy a market, or to get in short, which means to uh, sell a market, then uh, the stronger the rationale, the better the trade, the higher probability of the trade, the uh, you know arguably the higher potential for profit on that trade, and that's really what we're all looking for. Okay, so that's uh, that's confluence right there, and Fibonacci. 
is, for me, just an aspect of confluence, just like the candlesticks are. Now, uh, I know I go through this uh, a lot as well, but this, uh, this works particularly well with the Fibonacci's, okay? So this is my underlying market principle, trend pullback breakout. So when you see a trend, uh, you know, this is uh, how, uh, for most of my strategies, how I get into trades. You're looking for the trend first, you're looking for the pullback, you're looking for the breakout. Where do the Fibonacci's come in? They, they come in on the pullback. Okay, and when I, when I talk about uh, Fibonacci's in this manner, I'm talking about the Fibonacci retracements, and that's a bit different from the extensions, and I'm going to explain all this in a minute. But uh, basically, uh, what I'm looking here for uh, first is the trend, and then I'm looking for a pullback, and if it, could, uh, if it, uh, if it pinpoints on a Fibonacci level, then all the better. Uh, and then, uh, you know, that provides a, a higher probability uh, trading um, signal and trading opportunity for me. So trend, pullback, breakout. The pullback is where I'm looking for the Fibonacci. Okay, now support and resistance. Uh, what is support and resistance? Uh, Fibonacci's are support and resistance. What else is support and resistance? Pivot points are support and resistance. What else? Well, the, the um, you know, the main support and resistance that I look at. Whenever I look at any chart, I don't care which market you're talking about, whether it be uh, a currency pair, whether it be uh, um, an index uh, like the FTSE or the S&P 500, or if it's uh, gold or crude oil or what have you. Support and resistance, um, the main way that I look at support and resistance is through ter uh, past turning points in price. Okay, So if there is a, a key past turning point in price, you could bet that I'm going to pay attention to it and that I'm going to be um, pinpointing that as a potential support or resistance level or support and resistance level. Okay. Now, what is support and resistance? For those of you who are true beginners, support is a floor. Resistance is a ceiling. That's all there is. Uh, that, that's all there is to it, basically. Okay. So what is, what is support? What, is, what do I mean by floor? That means uh, an, a price level, a horizontal price level, where uh, you might be uh, able to expect more demand, more buying pressure to the upside. Resistance is just the opposite. As a ceiling, what it is, is it's a price level where uh, you can expect to find uh, selling pressure or supply. And then, you, you, uh, you know, oftentimes you'll see downward pressure. Now, does that mean that floors and ceilings cannot be broken? Absolutely not. One of the, uh, one of the uh, main ways that I trade and that many people trade uh, is through the use of breakouts. Breakouts are support and resistance. Okay? So if you have very, very strong support or very, very strong resistance, uh, and as we can see here in these diagrams, uh, you have very strong support, very strong resistance. If there's a breakout of those, then uh, that also counts as a potential trigger or a potential opportunity for a trading decision. And that's all we're looking for, trading decisions. Now, uh, what, are, what are Fibonacci's? They're basically support and resistance. Another way to pinpoint support and resistance uh, other than past turning points in price. Okay? Hopefully that's clear because um, for me it's very clear and this is uh, basically how I, uh, how I trade support and resistance. So, um, again, support is a uh, price floor, resistance is price ceiling. Now, significant price events tend to occur around established support and resistance levels, whether they be a bounce or a breakout, and we'll see that all over the charts, and I'll, see, and I'll show it to you in a second. Um, now, why does support and resistance exist? Because of market memory. Uh, if there is a certain price level where uh, traders and institutions believe uh, is uh, relatively low, then there could be buying pressure around that level. Uh, by the same token, if there's a, a, a level, a resistance level, a price level, where people think that our people, traders, institutions, what have you, think is uh, relatively high, then there might be uh, selling pressure at that level, and therefore uh, we have that um, resistance phenomenon. Um, so how do we trade support and resistance? We could trade them either uh, for their bounces or their breakouts, for their respect or their violation. Uh, same thing with Fibonacci's, and I'll show you that to you in a minute. Now, uh, just quickly, uh, the candlestick patterns, just to uh, very quickly go over this. Um, I went through all of this two weeks ago, and you'll, again, you'll find it on the uh, webinar recording on our website. But um, basically, the reason I'm showing you this again is just to um, hammer at home, if you will, and pun intended there, uh, hammer at home that... Um, that, uh, you know, I, I like to put things uh, in perspective. I like to put things together. So uh, if I have a Fibonacci level, uh, a key Fibonacci level, and I have a support level 
at that Fibonacci level. Let's say it's a 50% Fibonacci level. And then I have a hammer candle right around there. It All the better, okay? It makes for uh, all the better a... Um, a trading opportunity, a trading signal for me. So, uh, you know, I, again, I talked about all this two weeks ago. A hammer candle for me and a shooting star uh, candle are among the strongest candlestick patterns available, and I use them in conjunction with pretty much everything, okay? And it's not just because it's called a hammer candle or a shooting star candle. It's because of this thing right here, which is the wick, okay, the wick. And that shows that there uh, – that uh, you know, price intended or tried, attempted to go in a certain direction, but it was rejected, it failed, and therefore that could be a very strong support level and a potential turning point in price. So we're, when we're looking at Fibonacci's, we're looking for those potential turning points in price, okay, whether it be a retracement or what have you. So um, hammers, shooting stars work very well in conjunction with Fibonacci's, uh, as do doji, uh, and spinning tops, okay? So these are very strong candlestick pan patterns to use in conjunction with your Fibonacci's, as well as, you know, the other stuff that you use. Okay. Now, finally, let's get to Fibonacci's. Um, now, the subtitle, Introduction to Fibonacci, the subtitle, Seashells, Magic Numbers, and the Markets. Um, you know, I'm a very pragmatic guy, okay? So I'm, I'm not, uh, I, don't, I don't subscribe to magic numbers uh, or the fact that uh, Fibonacci numbers can be used in seashells. Okay, or in nature, in science, nature, or what have you. Okay, that's all great and good, but um, you know, in terms of does it work or not, that's what I'm concerned with. Now, uh, the fact that uh, you know people think Fibonacci uh, numbers are are magic, uh, that means nothing uh, to me. To me, uh, you know, what what is important to me is that a lot of people, a lot of traders, a lot of institutions. Um, you know, follow Fibonacci. It's not exclusively, but they do follow, They look, do look at Fibonacci levels, and therefore it becomes what's uh, known as a self-fulfilling prophecy. So basically, what that means is they don't. These numbers don't have any special magic um, uh, characteristics in and of themselves. Uh, what's special about them is a lot of people, a lot of traders, are looking and acting upon these uh, numbers, and therefore you often see. Um, what what is a self fulfilling prophecy which makes it uh, you know which makes it valid only because these people are looking at it if that makes sense to you okay so the fact that they're, they're in seashells or that uh, people think they're magic numbers doesn't mean a thing to me the the uh, the fact that they're um, you know that you'll often see turn you'll often see turning points in the markets at significant Fibonacci levels that's what matters to me okay okay so I'm going to go through this. Um, uh, this obligatory, uh, obligatory uh, you know, introduction to Fibonacci's very, very quickly, and then I'm going to get to the meat and potatoes of this, which uh, I'm going to show you on my charts. Okay, so what are Fibonacci's? This guy named Leonardo Pisano, uh, Leonardo de Pisa, uh, you know, some call him Leonardo Fibonacci or whatever. Uh, he was a mathematician. Uh, he was credited for the discovery of this uh, Fibonacci sequence of numbers, which is based on the golden ratio. Okay, it's just a mathematical uh, structure uh, that many people say, you know, occurs uh, throughout science, nature, and, you know, now some people say in the financial markets, and we'll see that in a second. Now, uh, the Fibonacci, um, <laughs> okay, uh, Stefan, you want to see the meat and potatoes and, uh, and tomatoes, great. Or, as you say, uh, tomatoes. But anyway, so uh, Fibonacci um, sequence is 1, 1, uh, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, etc., so on and so forth. What's special about this? Well, each two consecutive numbers added together equals the next number in the sequence. Okay, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 1 plus 2 equals 3, 2 plus 3 equals 5, and so on and so forth. Does that matter to me? Not at all, okay? What matters to me is that um, uh, the sequence of numbers, uh, within the sequence of numbers are the ratios uh, between those numbers. And this is what has become, in trading, a self-fulfilling prophecy. Okay, so um, the golden ratio is created when you divide any two consecutive numbers in that sequence, forwards or ba forward or backwards, and by doing this, the ratios progressively converge uh, towards uh, 0.618, or 61.8%, or 1.1618, or uh, 116 um, uh, percent, depending on the order of the division, okay? So uh, does that really matter to me? No, that doesn't really matter to me either. 
But what matters, again, is that people are looking at these. Now, in financial markets, uh, these ratios and the derivatives that come out of the Fibonacci sequence are used for Fibonacci retracements and extensions to both predict and project where a trend may turn or target or support and resistance, okay? And this is often used in Elliott Wave Analysis. Um, you know, Elliott Wave Analysis is a type of analysis that, uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty advanced uh, type of analysis. I don't really do it. Um, because it, didn't, it doesn't really work for me. The only aspect of Elliott Wave Analysis that works for me, or has worked for me in the past, are the Fibonacci's, okay? So, um, you know, a lot of Elliott Wave uh, uh, technicians use it, uh, but uh, Elliott Wave is all about, uh, you know, counting waves, and, you know, I don't really subscribe to it, but the Fibonacci's uh, work, uh, often work, okay? Now, um, so what's the difference between a retracement and an extension? A retracement is simply this. Let me just show you real quick. A retracement is this pullback right here, okay? To the downside, a retracement is to the upside, okay? In an uptrend, the retracement is to the downside. What is, it, what is an extension? It's a way to pinpoint a target, okay, in the, in the future, okay? Especially if you're near all-time highs, for example, or uh, you're near all-time lows, or near record highs or record lows or what have you. Uh, a good way to target them in uncharted territory, target price, is through the use of Fibonacci extensions. That being said, I use Fibonacci retracements a lot more because uh, I'm looking for where uh, I could find turning points in price, okay? So, um, the important ratios, okay, for re uh, RET is just retracement, okay? Uh, the important ratios uh, that I follow most often are 38.2%, 50%, and 61.8%, and okay? Let me just put in percentage terms. 38.2%, uh, 50%, and 61.8%. There's also, of course, um, the 100% re uh, retracement, which is basically, you know, a double bottom. If, if uh, you know, so, uh, for example, if, uh, if, you, uh, if, you draw, um, if you draw a Fibonacci retracement, which I'm going to show you in a second, 100% um, retracement is just it comes all the way back. Okay, 100%. Um, so these are the uh, these are the different retracements, but uh, the most important for me are 38%, 50%, and you know you could round this to 62%. Let's not get so uh, granular here, because uh, if you're really, I mean, let's face it, if you're really talking about 61.8%, um, you know it it it's it's not such an exact science as that. Um, you'd ra you know I would rather talk about 38%, 50%, and 62%. Okay, on your platform you'll find that uh, you know they do have the decimals there: 38.2%, 61.8%. Um, uh, but uh, we could we could certainly round those off. Now, in terms of extensions, which uh, I um, I talked about, uh, can you guys hear me? Uh, it looks like Ross says uh, the sound is gone. Okay, good. Okay, sorry about that. Um, okay, so uh, if we talk about uh, if we talk about the uh, extensions, uh, we have the most important extension right here is 161.8 percent, and I'll show you that in a minute. Okay, so I should have uh, bolded that right there. 161.8 percent in terms of the extension. But again, uh, in terms of ret retracements, these are the key ones that I use, and and uh, you know, most of the time I'm using retracements. Okay, I'm not often looking at extensions, but um, I will show you some extensions in a second. Okay. Okay. So now, what does this look like on a chart? Well, this is this is a this is a chart from a long time ago uh, that I just did a screenshot of. But this is what it looks like. Okay. So you know, if you look at the trend. Okay. So we're looking at the trend. We're looking at a retracement, a pullback here, and then we're looking at um, a breakout in the direction of the trend. So that's trend, pullback, breakout. Now, when we look at this. What do we have here, and it may be hard to see here, but this is the 38.2% or the 38% Fibonacci retracement, okay? The fact that it turned there, that it turned there and went back to the upside, was that a coincidence? Could be. Um, was, that, um, was that because uh, of some seashell somewhere? I don't know, okay? But the fact is that we have a, a turn here, and if this is a strong support level, and also this, uh, we see here, this is sort of a, uh, a doji, um, a doji hammer type of candle. Okay, uh, we talked about candlesticks two weeks ago. A uh, doji uh, hammer type of candle, and that for me is is a pretty good uh, indication in conjunction with this 38% Fibonacci level, in conjunction with support 
So if that occurs right around the same time, then there, we've got a pretty good uh, opportunity to, to go long in the direction, after this pullback, in the direction of the trend. Okay, so uh, that's how Fibonacci's work for the most part. Okay, uh, and Andrew, great question there. Uh, I'm sure you'll mention this, but uh, what time frame do you draw the Fib onto? Uh, this, uh, you know, everything I talk about, and this is a great question, Andrew, everything I talk about uh, it can be done on any time frame, and I, I mention this a lot. Uh, because of the fact that uh, people uh, always ask me this uh, question about the time frames. Now, the time frames can be done on any time frame. That being said, this is the same with candlesticks. It's the same with um, moving averages, with support and resistance, with the trends, uh, etc. Okay, but that being said, uh, I like to do this uh, more on the longer term time frames. For me, all of these tools are more valid on the longer time frames. Okay. Uh, you know, but also, if you're a five-minute trader, if you're a very short-term trader, absolutely, um, Fibonacci's will work. Absolutely, candlesticks will work, uh, and they'll work together well. But for me, you know, I like to, um, I like to look at these uh, from a, you know, from a, from a larger perspective uh, first. Okay, which means I'm usually looking on the daily chart. Okay, so uh, this is a. Uh, okay, yes, Ross, uh, great question there as well. Uh, is, is FIB always drawn from the left to right? Uh, for me, yes, it is, okay? For me, yes, it is. So left to right, whether from a low to a high or a high to a low, however you want to do it, okay? It's, uh, it, for me, it's always left to right, okay? Left to right. You look for a significant low to a significant high. So I'm going to cover that in a second. But basically, this is the picture here, the Fibonacci ratios. Okay. Now, uh, let's see how to draw them. Well, first of all, before we uh, show how to draw these, uh, let me just show you, of what, you know, on my current charts of uh, some things going on here. And now, this is a Euro-dollar uh, daily chart. It's a really messy chart, on it, and I apologize for that. Uh, I just draw a lot of stuff on it uh, every day. But um, let me just get rid of this. Okay, now, um, now as I mentioned, uh, you know, I just draw from a significant low to a significant high or a significant high to a significant low. Now, how you draw it and where you draw it from is uh, pretty subjective, okay? So it, it'll, uh, it'll be uh, based upon how you see where the trend is, okay? So could I have drawn it from this low here up to this high here? Yeah, of course I could have, okay? And I, I might have found uh, different things there. But, um, you know, here I drew it from back here all the way to this uh, significant high up here. And then here, it just pinpoints some support right around here, okay, the 38% uh, support line right there, okay? But more important than that, and I'm going to get rid of that because it's not such a good, uh, it's not such a good example there. More, a, a better example there is, uh, okay, here, we have, a, uh, we have a, the beginnings of a downtrend. This is uh, back in the day, okay? I'm going to show you current charts in a minute, but uh, just, to, just to give you an example here, uh, we show back in the day from this uh, big high, up here on euro dollar okay so all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my uh, this is MetaTrader so I would just click on this Fibonacci retracement right up here I would draw from the uh, the high down to a significant low okay so let's say that this low just occurred okay and then now we're uh, we're sort of uh, consolidating here now I would draw that line from up there to down here okay so that's from a high to a low and remember, this is just the beginning of the downtrend. I don't even know it's a downtrend yet because it looks to me still like an uptrend. Okay, so I don't know what's going to happen there. But let's say, um, you know, so now it's looking a little bearish. It broke down below some key support levels as well as uh, the moving averages. Now uh, I'm right around here. Now I'm going to draw from the very top. Okay, that's the obvious high, the very, uh, the very high up here. And then I'm going to draw from there down to the last major low, which is down here, support level around 135 on euro dollar. So that's a key support level as well. Okay, so now as price moves on, okay, I'm looking for a retracement and right here, okay. So I've talked about this uh, particular phenomenon right here a lot. Why is that? Because here, the 137 level was key support resistance, okay. Now when I drew this, uh, Fibonacci level, uh, you could see that it went all the way up here, and that's right around the 137 level. This, this I'm sorry, is a, it's hard to see, but it's 38% Fibonacci level, okay? So when you draw from uh, left to right, from high to low, you get all the, automatically get all your, uh, 
your Fibonacci levels, including the, uh, the, the important ones, 38%, 50%, and 61.8%. There's also the 23.6%, but I don't really pay attention to that one that much. Um, okay, so here we have this uh, pullback. So remember, trend, pullback, and uh, what do we have here but also the 200-day moving average, okay? So I show this a lot as a very good example of confluence because here we have the 38% Fibonacci retracement. So from this run, from the high to the low, 38% retracement is here. 200-day moving average is here. The 137 uh, uh, resistance level is right here on, on euro dollar. Also here. Uh, we see the stochastics moving down from overbought. If you followed my, uh, indicate, uh, my indicator webinar several weeks ago, and again, it's uh, recorded, so you can take a look at it. Uh, if, you, uh, if you saw that, you'll see that uh, these indicators, like the stochastics, are just another tool that I use to, to use in conjunction with these other tools. So here we have four different, different confluence factors. The Fibonacci level at 38%. 38%. We have the 200-day moving average. We have the 137 resistance level. We have this uh, cross down on the stochastics. Uh, if that's not a good signal, I don't know what is. Okay. So, uh, and then we could take our trigger possibly after a breakdown below this counter trend line right here. Okay. So uh, that's how that works uh, with the Fibonacci, how the Fibonacci's can be used in conjunction with the other tools that you have at your disposal. Um, okay, so also uh, more recently on, um, uh, well, this one didn't work so well, but more recently on the euro dollar, okay? So uh, I drew a, a line from this uh, relative high here down to this 12-year uh, low on euro dollar, and we have the 38% right here. It stopped there, uh, you know, uh, late last week, but as we saw today, we had a big up move uh, that broke through there. Okay, so uh, I don't know when this uh, euro dollar uh, rally is going to be over, but um, I have resistance at 114. Okay, 114. If it breaks above there, um, then uh, you know this could, this can move for, further up towards the 11640 level or so, which is a key support resistance level. But uh, you know th this. Uh, this uh, rebound and partial recovery in euro dollar has for me been uh, unforeseen uh, because I didn't, um, I'm looking for further uh, dollar strength and euro weakening, but right now it's just not giving it to me. So at this point, uh, the 38.2% has been breached. Okay, so now let's take a look at uh, pound dollar real quick. Um, uh, just to show you something, and, and you know, I am using a lot of currencies right now because I am analyzing a lot of currencies right now. Uh, but uh, this this works on any uh, any stock, any um, index, any commodity, uh, depending on how you use it. Okay. Okay. So here, uh, here, same thing here uh, with the pound dollar. I have the uh, significant high back here. I drew it down to this significant low. It pulls back to the 38% line. Okay, which was also around the 165 resistance level, okay? So uh, that for me was, was a slight confluence within this uh, beginning of, beginnings of this uh, downtrend, and, um, and then we saw a continuation from there, okay? Just a couple more um, examples before I show you um, the big examples I'm going to show you in a minute. Okay, uh, this is uh, dollar-yen. Um, here, oops, let me just get rid of this real quick. Okay, uh, here on dollar yen. Okay, dollar yen. Uh, just back in time, let me show you um, right over here. Okay, so uh, I took from this significant low to this significant high, uh, and then it went down to around the uh, fifty uh, fifty percent Fibonacci retracement level. Now, um, a lot of you may think, you know, it's bound to turn at one of these levels, right? If it doesn't turn at 38 or 50 or 61, then it's going to go to 100 or what have you. So, uh, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, I, I, I'm well aware of that criticism. Uh, that's why you need to use confluence in your trading. So uh, that's why, you know, the fact that it goes to 50 doesn't mean that it's a magic number or what have you. Uh, but if it works in conjunction with your other tools, then that for me is a stronger rationale, okay? Um, just like we saw in the euro dollar uh, back then. But uh, here we have this uh, retracement to the 50% and then a move up from there. Uh, and then over here more recently, uh, we have uh, a draw from this uh, low down here all the way to this high up here, and then a pullback uh, went right back down to the 38% Fibonacci level. For me, the, uh, the, you know, the strongest Fibonacci levels are 38% 
or 60 uh, or 61.8 percent or 62 percent okay so 38 percent and 62 percent are for me um, the strongest levels so we see this pullback to here and since then uh, you know it has not breached under uh, that 38 uh, percent and I am looking for further upside on dollar yen finally um, Aussie dollar before we get to uh, this other stuff that I'm going to show you uh, here uh, we draw from this significant high down to the significant low and then uh, we have uh, we have resistance up here at the 61.8 percent Fibonacci level uh, which seems to be strong now uh, here as we can see you know, right here yeah um, uh, Hassan if you're talking about that 50 percent uh, right here uh, yeah and then here we also have a um, uh, oh I'm sorry th this happened beforehand uh, this happened beforehand so that's not really valid but uh, here, so we have this turn down at 38%, but here uh, we have this uh, sort of shooting star, uh, whatever you want to call this, a shooting star um, doji candle, or uh, I'm sure there's a name for it, but uh, here this occurred right around the 61.8%, uh, and then a move down from there, and I am looking for further downside on Aussie dollar. Okay, so now, uh, okay, Hassan, I think your question means uh, what... Uh, what about the 50 percent? Yeah, the 50 percent, you know, 50 percent is also key. But for me, I'm seeing most of the retracements that I'm looking at, at least, uh, are at the 38 uh, percent or the 62 percent. So, you know, all three of those are my main ones. But, you know, for me, slightly stronger on the 62 percent and the 38 uh, percent rather than the 50 percent. Okay. Now, this is, uh, this is a euro dollar chart. It's, it's a chart that I don't analyze and I don't look at much. Um, and uh, that's why I want to do this on here. Now, I've pinpointed some, uh, you know, prior to this webinar, I just pinpointed some areas, some significant highs and lows, et cetera, that we could be looking at or we have looked about at in the past. And this is a daily chart uh, as well. I'm just going to go back in time and just draw these for you just to show you how to draw them. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we'll go from there. So uh, basically, you know, in a downtrend, you're, if you're looking for retracements, then you're going to draw from a high to a low. Okay, so that just makes sense. Uh, you're going to draw from a high to a low. Uh, you could, I could have done the same thing right here from a high to a low or a high to a low or what have you. So again, it's a little bit subjective, but um, you know, in terms of finding the highs and lows, but uh, you could find them. So here, uh, here I have this high up here, the significant swing high. Okay, so all I have to do is take my Fibonacci uh, tool which is right up here on MetaTrader, and you, you have this on every platform, including my uh, advantage, including our Advantage Trader platform. Uh, you simply click down and then drag down, and then as you can see, it it opens up like that. And then I'm going to click down and then drag down to the significant low that I see, okay, and then let go. Okay, now what do we see here? Now we see lots of different levels here. Okay, so this move, uh, this high up here, down to this low down here. What do we see here? Okay, so almost on the dot at a 62% Fibonacci retracement. Uh, and this is within a downtrend. So that's a very good signal right there. Did it happen? Did this turn down happen because uh, the 62% uh, Fibonacci retracement level was there? Absolutely not. Did it happen because of fun some fundamental uh, trigger? Yeah, probably. Uh, did it happen because of some uh, some other technicals? Maybe, uh, but in terms of uh, the fact that the 62% is there, no, it did not turn because of that. But um, that is another factor that contributes to the technicals for this uh, for this particular setup. So if you see the technicals uh, turning on a dime at uh, at 60 at the 62% level, okay, um, then uh, then that could that could well be it. Okay, uh, Harry, you ask, uh, is this uh, also a, a trend line? You know, at that point, not well. Let me let me actually uh, do it from this top right here. Oh, actually, you're right. Um, you know, sort of, sort of. It's not precise, uh, but you know, around that level or so, uh, you you could say that uh, there's also a trend line. Yeah, you asked, uh, wouldn't there be a trend line also there? You know, it's approximate. Uh, trend lines are, are, you know, are not very precise. You often see breaches of trend lines that are, that are false, um, but um, that's why I don't take a lot of stock in trend lines. But uh, if you want to take a look at some resistance here, yeah. You know, I mean, you, you could look at some resistance there in terms of uh, dynamic uh, resistance. Now, I didn't even outline any support or resistance levels here, so I don't know. But if you take a look right here, doesn't this look like a uh, resistance level right here? Okay. 
So I drew that line right there. Doesn't that look like a resistance level right there? And then here you have corresponding support. Resistance, I'm sorry, support becomes resistance. Resistance becomes support. Um, okay. Uh, Steve, you asked, what three simple moving averages do I use? Um, I usually use the 200, the 100, and the 50. Okay, 200, 150. I don't, I didn't even put these on here because again, I don't really trade Euro dollar, uh, Euro Aussie. Uh, I don't really analyze it. I'm just showing this uh, to you just to show you that this could work on any chart, and um, and uh, I just wanted to show you how to draw it as well without having any pre-existing drawings here. So uh, here we have the uh, a strong uh, support becomes resistance line. Uh, so that's a, a great confluence factor. Okay, and then we ha also have this. 62% Fibonacci retracement, great factor there. Okay, I'm not sure what we see here on the uh, indicators. Uh, this happens to be, uh, oh, this is an ATR, so it's not even, um, it's not even valid there. But, um, you know, this could very well, this is a spinning top uh, candlestick as well. So right there, I see around three different confluence factors, and that's not even having mapped out anything. Okay, it mapped out prior to this uh, any um, moving averages or any, uh, any other factors here, and uh, and you know you have this nonetheless. You have uh, support and resistance. You have the spinning top. Uh, you know I don't know what in other indicators are showing because I don't have them on. But we also have the 62% uh, percent Fibonacci retracement level. Okay, so let me get rid of that. So that that's a key um, that's a key one right there. Now let me let me go back in time and let's draw some more. Okay, so now, uh, you know, this is a significant high, this is a significant low, okay, and then we see a retracement. Once we see that retracement occur, what are we going to do? Uh, we're going to be drawing this, okay. Okay, we're going to be drawing this. Now, when we draw this, um, you know, we're going to be drawing this after this uh, significant low takes place, okay, and then, uh, and then we're going to see if there are any retracement uh, opportunities. Now, as we can see here, this retracement uh, up towards the 62%, you know, it did overshoot it, and that's fine. Uh, it overshot it, shot it within a day and came back down. And also this one right here, it came back up, and then this turned into somewhat of a shooting star candlestick here before, um, you know, going back to the downside. Uh, is this a perfect setup? You know, probably not. Uh, but is this uh, a good uh, potential setup if there are other factors here? Yes. Okay, if there are other factors here, which, again, I don't have, uh, on here, I didn't uh, pre, um, I didn't pre, uh, you know, do this. But uh, you know, if there's, uh, uh, there could very well be an opportunity. Now, Harry, you asked trips some stop losses there. Uh, not necessarily. Now, uh, not necessarily. Now, it depends on where you went short. Uh, if you're going short, um, if you're anticipating this level and going short before this level gets hit, then yeah, you, your your stop may be tripped. Okay, if you're if you're going short like here, which I don't know why you would ever do. Okay, I don't know why you. Uh, a lot of people say, um, you know, I want to go short at a certain resistance level, or I want to go long at a certain support level. But we haven't hit that uh, support or resistance level. But I want to go. You know, I want to put in an, an order to go sh uh, to go long at a uh, when we get down to a, s a certain support level, or go short at a, uh, at a certain resistance level. Now, you know, a, a lot of a lot of stock trades, a lot of share traders often do this, which is fine. But when they're trying to get into an, uh, into a market at a lower price, for example, or trying to short a market at a higher price, that's fine. But in terms of the technical uh, aspects of trading, what I usually do is wait for uh, a resistance or support level to be hit, and then to see some indication of a turn at that level, because support and resistance uh, levels are are hit and and breached and broken all day long. Okay, so how do I know that's going to hold as a support resistance level? Not only not I won't know until the market gives me some indication that that level will hold, or should hold or might hold, okay? Only then, and only then will I uh, consider taking that trade. So I'm not going to say, you know, uh, okay, so on Euro, uh, on Euro Aussie at this point, 150.50 is a resistance level. So it's, although it's not there yet, I'm, uh, you know, I'm going to put in order to go short there, okay? I wouldn't do that because uh, I'm looking for the resistance level to get hit and then for it to show some sign of, of turning to the uh, other side, and then I'm going to get into that trade. Okay, but great question there, Harry. And yeah, that's where discipline comes in as well. Okay, so I'm not going to be uh, predicting where the turn is happening. I'm not. I'm not trying to 
uh, point. I'm not trying to pick tops and bottoms. Okay, I'm not trying to uh, to you know, as they say, uh, catch a falling knife here. What I'm trying to do is I'm looking for potential turning points. Yes, but once it reaches those turning points, I'm looking for evidence or indication or whatever you want to call it that that turn is actually occurring. And once I see that, then I'm going to get into a trade, and for me, that's going to be a higher probability trade. And then at that point, I'm going to set my stop loss accordingly. So in this example, once it hit the 62%, you know, at that point, I'm thinking, you know, let's see if it goes down. So if it starts going down, then thinking, okay, I'm going to get in. You know, uh, of course, I need other, uh, my other tools to, to confirm that, but uh, let's say I get in uh, short, okay? Then I'm going to place my stop loss not at the 62% per, uh, level, but I'm going to place it above the last high, okay? And, and uh, this doesn't really make sense on this chart because this is a daily chart, and I'm not going to be placing such wide stops. Uh, so I, usually what I'm doing is I'm, um, I'm drilling down into the shorter time frames, okay? So I can get tighter stops. I'm usually not looking for this type of thing right here, okay? Okay, so that's, uh, that's another example right there. Um, let me see here. Uh, Ross, could you maybe set your uh, stop past the next FIB level? You could, you could, and then the next FIB level uh, would probably be the, I forget, it's 70-something, uh, but I don't usually use that FIB level. Uh, you could do that, you could do that, but again, it doesn't really make sense on the daily chart because it would be too wide of a stop. Uh, Kareem, uh, for example, what tools will you use to show signs of a turnaround? Well, like I, like I mentioned to you before, um, you know, and, you know, it really, it really shows very clearly on this Euro-dollar chart, uh, on this example right here. And I can't show a better example. There are many, many examples that, sh that happen all the time. But I can't show a better example that's more clearly uh, indicated than on this one right here, okay? And this one being uh, the confluence on Euro-dollar um, where, uh, w w you know, I'm looking for a turning point because we got a downtrend, we got a pullback, and then I'm looking for a potential turn to the downside, okay? So now I've got resistance at the 137 level. I got resistance at the 200-day moving average. I got this 38% uh, this, uh, uh, Fibonacci level, and I've got this cross down on my stochastics. So that, for me, are, are you know, it's a pretty strong confluence of a potential turning point in, um, in euro dollar. Okay. Uh, let me take one more question before moving on. Uh, uh, Andrew, once the FIB is applied, for how long is it uh, applicable in, in regards to time after, after it is placed before you have to set a new one? Uh, that is a great question right there. So when is it, uh, how long is it applicable uh, for? Well, it, it really depends. For me, it depends. Uh, you know, sometimes I will have a long-term Fibonacci uh, in place. Like, for example, what I just showed you on Eurodollar. Um, uh, you know, I had one before, I, I erased it, but I had one before all the way from down here to up there, okay? So sometimes I'll have that in for a long uh, period of time, uh, and other times it'll be short time. It really depends on uh, the span of, uh, of your high to low. So, for example, uh, you know, if you've got a, a short span here, like, uh, like for example, if you, if you want to try this one right here, which really doesn't show a lot, but if you want to uh, do this one right here, it's probably going to be in play for a very short period of time. So it really depends, uh, you know, how long. And once it, be, uh, once it moves beyond the scope of your, um, of your range, then at that point uh, you're probably setting uh, new Fibonacci levels, okay? So, um, for example, here, uh, you know, I drew from this high to this low. Uh, right here, high to low here, and then it hit my 62%, and then it moved down uh, further, and then it continued moving down. At this point, once it moves out of the range, then it's probably, and then I'm probably drawing another uh, another Fibonacci level, okay? Another Fibonacci uh, drawing, okay? Because uh, that one it moved out of the range. At that point, I might be using extensions or what have you. But um, in terms of uh, uh, in terms of the uh, duration, yes, it's, it's, uh, as long as it stays in range, then the duration should be applicable. Um, okay, so uh, for example, uh, I just did this one, I believe, right here. Okay, now um, just to the upside, just to show you uh, one on the upside, uh, let's draw this one right here from down here, this obvious low, down up to this obvious high. Now, what, what, is this, uh, what do we see here? This you could call a... Um, um, a, a shooting star candle, okay? 
uh, not exactly, but a shooting star candle, you know, it looks like. Uh, and if this is a uh, support or resistance level, I, again, I don't know if it is or not. Uh, let's see if it is or not. Okay, I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe not. But, um, you know, in, in terms of this, I've got a candlestick there. I don't know what my indicators are showing, but uh, I've got, um, uh, you know, I've got this uh, drawing here. Now, uh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have been uh, showing that. It's, uh, it's actually right down here. Okay, it is. Okay, so uh, it's right down here. Okay, this is where the pullback took place. Uh, this is, uh, you know, I, I sort of... Uh, I wasn't thinking that. It, it has nothing to do with that up there. But anyway, so we draw from this low to this high up here, and we're looking for the pullback. And uh, we see this pullback. Now, it, it slightly overshoots the 50. That's fine. Okay, it slightly overshoots the 50. But then more important than the 50% uh, Fibonacci level is this support level right here. Okay, so will there be a turn at that level? Maybe, maybe not. Uh, is it stronger if there's Fibonacci and, um, and uh, also the support level? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Uh, let's uh, let's move uh, forward a little bit. Let me get rid of these two real quick, and then I want to show you some extensions as well before I wrap this up. Okay, uh, let me see here. I did that. Okay. Um, okay. So uh, just a small significant. Oops, wrong tool there. Uh, this, um, just a small significant high to low, you know, I have uh, drawn from high to low, and then I've got that right there, okay, so right around the 62% once again, okay. Let's get rid of that. Let's try another one uh, from up here to down here, okay, a significant high to a significant low. Uh, this happened to be a, uh, a shooting star candle, uh, but that doesn't really matter. Um, here I have, uh, you know, uh, lots of stuff going on here. This is around 38% Fibonacci level. What do we have here? Uh, we, ha we also have, like, uh, different uh, candlestick patterns. We have a spinning top. Then we've got a, a shooting star and several indecisive candles right there. Do we have support uh, resistance right here? I believe we do, okay? So right here. If you want to draw in that support level here from a prior turn point, support becomes resistance, becomes support, etc. cetera. Uh, you have a confluence right there. Okay, so uh, here you have a, a significant high to a significant low, a pullback to the 38% Fibonacci level, and then we have some uh, nice candlesticks here. We also have, um, most importantly, a, a significant res support becomes resistance line, and then a turn down from there. Okay, and I don't, I'm not sure what the indicators are saying. Okay, now, um, and also, okay, so before this occurred, before this specific one occurred, we had an h &S or as we call it, a, uh, a head and shoulders pattern, okay? So a large head and shoulders pattern. Once we see a pattern like that, that's also part of the confluence, okay? So uh, let's draw this one uh, here. Okay, so this is a really good one, actually. Okay, so first of all, we have the makings of a head and shoulders pattern, okay? Uh, the makings of a head and shoulders pattern. Now, um, we have the left uh, shoulder, we have a head here, we have the right shoulder here. Now. Uh, what do we have? We, we draw from the high, which is obvious. We draw to the next low, which is also pretty obvious. Uh, and then uh, we have our Fibonacci's. Now, here we have the 62% Fibonacci. It stops first here, and then it goes down, fine. Uh, and then it goes back up, and then it forms this very nice candlestick pattern. Again, right around, uh, right around this 62% level. As well as, um, you know, we, we could, this, is, uh, this could be seen as approximate resistance. Um, you know, give or take, uh, approximate resistance. But most importantly, here uh, we have this 62%. Uh, we've got this nice candlestick pattern, and we've got a head and shoulders pattern. And, uh, you know, you put all th that together, what's the story it's trying to tell you? It hit a high. It tried to hit a high again. It failed, and now it looks like it's going to the downside. And once we have our trigger in place, we can get into a trade accordingly. Why, how would you get into this trade? Could, would you get in, uh, into it right at this... Um, at this 155 level, which is also a uh, psychological level, uh, would you get in here? You know, if you're smart enough, you would. Uh, but uh, usually, I'm not smart enough to do that. So how would I get in? Probably on some type of a break. Okay, I'm looking for some type of a break to get into the trade. Uh, probably on this type of thing. Okay. Um, but I have all of this. Uh, I have all this ammunition behind me. 
I have the head and shoulders. I have the 62%. I have this candlestick pattern. I probably have an indicator uh, pattern as well. And once I see that this is moving to the downside, then I'm going to draw my uh, line to possibly get in on a breakout. Remember, trend, pullback, breakout. Trend, pullback, breakout. Okay? All right. Uh, just a couple more before I wrap this up. Um, here, we see here. Um, okay, yeah, that's not such a good one. That's not such a good one because it didn't go all the way down to 38%, but it just shows 38% uh, there, uh, right right over here, which it eventually did go to. Uh, okay, so um, in terms of this, okay, now extensions. Let me just uh, show you how to draw an extension. Now, uh, an, extension, an extension is drawn slightly differently, okay? If you're in an uptrend and you're looking for uh, uh, further targets, okay, what you could do is, uh, you know, it's still left to right. But uh, it's in the uh, opposite fashion. So if we're in a if we're in an uptrend, remember uh, we would be drawing uh, from left to right from from a low to a high, okay, to look for retracements. But if we're looking for, for example, if we're at a near an all time high, or we're looking for a target, you know, further uh, further to the upside, for example, then we would draw it uh, instead of drawing from a low to a high in an uptrend, we could draw it from a, a high to a low. Okay, and that's where we would get our 161.8% Fibonacci level. Let me get rid of this one just to make it clearer. Okay, so 161% uh, Fibonacci level right there. Okay, so that one is right there. 161.8%, that could be used as a potential targeting method in uncharted territory if you're near, at or near an uh, all-time high. So, uh, again, in an uptrend, you're going to be, um, you know, for retracements, you're going to be drawing from a low to a high. In an in a, a uptrend, if you're looking for extensions to the upside, then you would uh, be, uh, you know, drawing from a high to a low, from a significant high to a low. Okay. Uh, same thing here. Let me get rid of this one. Um, same thing here. Just, to, just This is just a little one here, you know. Uh, if you draw this one, you could see that the 261.8% Fibonacci level is right there. Uh, this isn't really significant, but uh, just to show you nonetheless that uh, this could be a way, if you are in uncharted territory and you can't find another way to, to set your uh, support or resistance, then um, you know Fibonacci extensions can be used in that respect, left to right uh, in an uptrend, uh, high to low, and I've got my uh, extensions at 161.8, 261.8, and it's right there as my target. Okay? Okay. Uh, a lot of questions here. I think that should be, I think I addressed most of those. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, hopefully you got something out of this uh, out of this today, out of the Fibonacci's today. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be covering the uh, UK elections all day long, so please stay tuned to that on our uh, website, cityindex.co.uk, on our live blog and our analysis. Uh, and then two weeks from now I'm going to be talking about support and resistance, so it's going to be a big webinar. Hopefully you all, all can make it. Sign up at uh, cityindex.co.uk under the Learn to Trade section, and uh, we'll go from there. If you have any questions, please feel free to email me anytime, james.chen at cityindex.co.uk. I'd like to thank all of you uh, for your time today, and see you next time. Thank you very much.